So, I'm frequently asked if I can post more behind the scenes and puppet making videos. That kind of material is usually reserved for my Patreon page. But since everyone can't afford to be a patron, I've decided to re-edit and upload on YouTube a bit of that content. So those of you who are genuinely interested in my creative process can take a peek into that part. You might recognize this hammerhead monster from my film Zorg the Conqueror. It's very representative of the puppet making techniques I use, so let's have a look at how that was made. I always start with some kind of sculpture. In this case it's the head and neck of the monster. The sculpture is executed in monster clay medium grade, which is still my favorite sculpting material. I use mainly loop tools. This one I made myself from steel wire and the handle of a discarded brush. I'm using an oil painting brush with stiff bristles dipped in Vaseline to smooth out the sculpted details and make them look more organic. I'm jumping ahead a bit here. I've created a dental plaster mold over the sculpture and the clay has been removed from the hard plaster which has been allowed to dry out. I've cast a layer of tinted latex into the mold. However, one layer is not enough to make the skin sturdy enough, so I'm adding a couple more layers with ordinary latex. I'm mostly using a sponge for this purpose, but also Q-tips to reach certain areas in the mold. Now to add extra support I use thin sheets of polyurethane foam soaked in latex. When dry this latex foam mix has an almost clay like quality and you can use it to add support and build up bulk on a puppet. I simply press the foam down onto the latex surface and use various tools to get it into all nooks and crannies. All latex cast in a plaster mold must first be dusted down with talcum powder or cornstarch before it's removed or the shiny surface of the skin might stick to itself. I'm sometimes asked what uh, kind of aluminum wires I use, and here's one type. Its diameter is 2mm, and this particular one happens to be black. What color it is doesn't matter. It's folded double or triple to create strong but bendable joints. The tie downs are super important for a puppet. I'm using T nuts with a threaded bolt to keep my puppet's feet anchored to the animation stage. The T-nut has small hooks to make it stick properly in a wall. I believe that's actually what, I, what you're supposed to use it for. But I don't need those hooks, so I simply flatten them down with a pair of pliers. Here's a slightly odd but important detail. I add a small blob of thermoplastic on the top of the nut where the bolt is poking through the threaded hole. The purpose of this is to stop another material, I'll apply in a minute, from running down into that hole and fix the bolt permanently. And we don't want that. Here's how the nut looks with the cooled plastic. Now. To attach the aluminum wires to this nut and make it stick really really well, I'm using an old model maker's trick. First I apply a fast setting super glue. It sets in about 10 seconds. Then I press down the aluminum wires around the top of the nut. These wires will become the legs obviously because of the tie downs. Then I apply baking soda to the nut and wires 
and over that I add more super glue. I keep covering the wire and knot attachment area with this baking soda super glue mix until it looks pretty well covered. And I can promise you, you will need a tank to break up that bond now. To create the bendy joints in the armature, I have to cover up the non-bendy bits. I use thin nails with cut-off heads to create those areas. The nails are simply laid against the aluminum wires and strong yarn is wrapped around the nail and wires. And here's the finished armature. The legs have been bulked up with hard camping cushion foam to add extra volume without adding weight. The toes and tail are wrapped with soft yarn covered with liquid latex. I'm starting to add the padding to the body and I use soft polyurethane foam for that. Contact cement is the bonding agent. I smeared a bit of glue on the armature and then blew lightly on the glue on the foam and this makes the glue stick faster. To attach the head latex skin, I first cover the foam padding with contact cement, and then I do the same to the foam padding inside the latex skin head. Since I didn't show how the skin was attached to this bit of foam, I should explain that liquid latex was used as a bonding agent. But the latex is dried slightly with a heat gun. It will create a very quick bond when the foam is pressed into the head skin. The foam of the headpiece is sticking nicely to the armature. And I've added an aluminum wire to the lower lip of the puppet's mouth so it can be animated, and I will now join that wire, or the ends of the wire, to the rest of the armature using melted thermoplastic. Getting back to those uh, hard foam bits on the legs, as you can hopefully see, they help create the shape of the legs when uh, the foam sheets are wrapped around them. This is a thin strip of foam folded over and glued together. It will now help create the shape of the tail. There's been no sight of that hammer yet on this hammer-headed monster, but here it is, or at least the start of it. I'm using an old plastic latex bottle for the main part. The middle of this bottle has been cut away, so these are the two bits I'll be using along with this cardboard tube. The various bits are joined using hot melt glue. The hammer shape needs to be attached to the armature, and I'm using more melted thermoplastic to achieve that.
This piece here is uh, another bit of camping cushion foam attached to a latex bit. Simply created with cotton dipped in latex and draped over a clay shape. It'll be attached to the back end of the hammerhead. To create an organic looking surface on the hammer, I'm attaching a mix of cotton and latex to the cardboard and plastic bottle parts. Let's talk a little bit about skin textures. I will be using old skin texture mold molds for uh, most of this puppet, but I wanted a sort of ankylosaur-like armored knobbly texture for the back of this monster. And like all my textures, this one was sculpted flat using small loop tools, mostly taking away clay, but also adding bits. When I'm happy with the, the look of the sculpture, I build a clay containment wall around it. And I then cover the sculpture with dental plaster. The first layer is brushed around all nooks and crannies, and then the rest of the plaster is poured on. When the plaster has set, the clay wall is removed, and the mold is lifted off the sculpture. It usually comes off pretty easily, since it's flat. Tinted latex is then sponged into the mold. I always tint the latex I cast, since I can then get a good base color to the latex pieces. After adding two layers and allowing them to dry, I can now remove the skin piece. It's dusted down first, of course, and then it simply peeled off the mold. To attach the latex skin bits to the foam padding, the foam is dabbed with latex, which is allowed to dry slightly. The skin bits are also dabbed with latex. And then carefully draped over the foam padding. By the way, the hole you can see in the back here is an attachment point for a flying rig. It'll be used when the monster is running and jumping. Liquid latex is also used for covering the seams between the various cast bits. So far, this monster is both blind and deaf, and it has no nose, so I figured I ought to add some sensory organ to it. A single, ominously staring eye will probably do the trick. Here's a method for creating very simple but effective eyes. I have here a sheet of photoshopped eyes printed out on ordinary printing paper. I add a blob of black hobby paint to the pupil on the selected eye design. This is so the pupil will stand out better. When the paint is dry, I add an acrylic sphere over the eye image. I buy these spheres from a scrapbooking shop. There's also where I get the glue I'll be using. Glossy accents. When the eyepiece 
has been cut from the paper printout. It's glued to a bit of aluminum wire which will serve as an eye stock. This wire is covered with soft yarn and tinted latex. At its base is a bit of latex soaked cotton which, when dry, will serve as an attachment surface against the head. It's finally time to give the monster its paint job. I first stipple on a unifying dark color using a foam sponge and tinted latex. Then a lighter tinted latex is dry brushed on in a few layers. And here's the finished beast. As a final touch, it's been given claws and teeth made from cotton and latex. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.